Hi everyone, welcome back to Dulce Sweets. Today we are going to be making a spring fling cake. I am from Denver and the spring fling cake is one of the most iconic cakes in Denver. The cake is from a restaurant called The Market located in downtown Denver. They recently closed and when they did, they published the recipe for the cake. So that is what we're going to be making today. So vamos, let's go. for the cake will be two and a half cups of shredded zucchini, a one and a quarter cups of sugar, a quarter cup of oil, one cup of sour cream, half a tablespoon of vanilla, five eggs, half a teaspoon of baking soda, and half a teaspoon of baking powder, a pinch of salt, and three and a half cups of flour. So we are going to do the dry ingredients first. That is just flour, baking soda, baking powder, and salt. And then we're just gonna whisk that together. Now for the wet ingredients, you're gonna mix your, all the rest of the ingredients. So the zucchini, sugar, sour cream, make sure to get all the sour cream in there because it's a whole cup. And the oil, vanilla and then your five eggs. So now we're going to beat our wet ingredients together and just to make sure don't drain out your zucchini because that's what brings moisture to the cake and it'll just become deliciousness. So we're gonna mix the wet ingredients together. So now that that is all combined we are going to mix our dry into our wet ingredients and then just beat that together. So you have your cake batter ready, super simple recipe. And we are just gonna fill our pans. I have floured and greased the pans. This, These pans that I'm using are six inch pans and they're two inches deep. If you go more than two inches deep, then it the outside kind of gets burnt and the inside isn't fully cooked. So I'd recommend two inches deep at the maximum. Maximum, yeah. <laughs> two inches deep at the maximum. And we're just gonna eyeball it. We're just gonna eyeball pouring it in there. So we have filled our pans. I did it about two thirds full. Oh, it's about two thirds. <laughs> two thirds full. And we are going to put those in the oven at 350 degrees for 50 to 70 minutes, depending on your oven. You might want to check it at 40 minutes and then every 10 minutes after that with a toothpick in the center of the cake. And then when it comes out clean and it's done. Um, yeah, we're just going to pop those in and then start on the frosting. So this is a perfect time to cut your fruit for the top of the cake and for the inside of the layers of the cake. Um, we are going to do mangoes, kiwis, strawberries, and blackberries. You could also do grapes and blueberries, but we're just keeping it super simple. Um, we are going to put this on the top and on the inside um, for decoration and just to eat because it's delicious. This is my favorite part of the cake. It so good. So I'm going to cut those and then we are going to put it on top of the cake once it's fully frosted and on the inside. So now that the cakes are cooling, the fruit is cut. We did it for the outside and the inside and it's the perfect time to do the frosting. Um, so what you're going to need is room temperature cream cheese, three quarters cup, a quarter cup of butter at room temperature, um, vanilla, half a teaspoon, and powdered sugar. We are going to be tripling the recipe, so eventually it's gonna be a ton of frosting, so that's why we're making it, even though it's only six by six. So what you're gonna do first is do the cream cheese and butter. We're gonna cream that together, and then, yeah, we'll just start with that. <laughs> wow. Now that 
that the butter and cream cheese are combined, we are going to gradually beat in the powdered sugar until it is smooth. That was a mouthful. <laughs> so I know you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, this is so much powdered sugar for the amount of butter and cream cheese there is. But really, we are not finished with the frosting, so we're gonna add half of a cup of heavy whipping cream, and we're gonna beat that till stiff peaks. You'll know when stiff peaks form when you lift up your beater and it stays up by itself without falling over. So just to make sure you have stiff peaks and you don't over mix, you just check it when it's starting to thicken up, you can put it upside down. Oh my God, I'm so scared. <laughs> You can put it upside down like that and it won't fall over. I really don't want it to fall. So <laughs> make sure not to over mix. And now we're going to fold in the heavy whipping cream into the butter and cream cheese mixture along with the vanilla. So now is my most favorite part of the cake. We are going to assemble and decorate it. It's gonna look amazing. So, we are going to put the bottom tier on the cake stand. You can also use a turntable, but I'm not gonna use one today. So you wanna put your bottom cake on the cake stand and then have some frosting. I'm just gonna scoop it on there. You can also pipe it, but I'm just gonna scoop it since it's easier <laughs> than piping. So you have some frosting on there. You can use an offset spatula and just move it around like this. So now you're going to add the chopped up fruit to the center of the cake. I'm just gonna use my hands. And then you're just gonna spread that out evenly. So once you have your fruit on there, you wanna press it down with a spoon so it like kind of goes into the frosting. And then you're just gonna stack your next layer of cake on there, just like that. Push it down as much as you need, make sure it's even. And then you're just gonna put frosting on, put the fruit on, then your last layer of cake. Okay, so for the final layer, you are going to flip the cake upside down so it has a smoother top edge. <laughs> just like that, and frosting will be coming out of the sides. That's just fine, because we're gonna frost it outside. So after you put the first layer, the last layer on, <laughs> not the first layer, we are way past that. Um, we are going to do crumb coat. You don't have to do crumb coat, it's just um, an extra layer of frosting before you put more frosting on, um, just so the fruit can settle in to the layers and it will just be a sturdy cake. So the crumb coat isn't supposed to be perfect, it's just to make sure the cake is stable and all the fruit is in there. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit of fruit sticking out. That's okay, because we're gonna put more frosting, and I'm just gonna put this in the fridge for about 15 minutes. You can go longer, but I really wanna eat this cake. <laughs> so we finally get to do my favorite part of making this cake. We get to actually frost it, make it look pretty, and then put the fruit on. So you could just use an offset spatula. I'm not doing it very prof Professional? Professional? With a piping bag, because I just want to get this done because I want cake. <laughs> so, we're gonna start with the top, and just spread it around. Put as much as you need. You can put more, because it's gonna go over to the side. So now we are going to smooth out the cake, get all of the bumps and wrinkles out, and then put the fruit on top. So this is the finished result of the cake. We just put the fruit on, it looks great. Um, we put blackberries around the edge. If you are doing a six inch pan like we did, you could do less fruit and less frosting because it is such a small cake. And on the top, we just did strawberries, mangoes, kiwis, and then a strawberry in the middle, and then blackberries around the edge. If you're wondering why yours looks so non 
shiny or dull than the market cake is because they use a glaze. It's just apricot jam and some hot water mixed together and then with the pastry brush, you can go over the top of the cake to make it look shiny. So this is the finished result. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. See you next time, bye.